Hi, Physics 11A. I'm so sorry that I can't be with you today, but I'm hoping that by watching this video, you'll be able to keep going with the work and I'll hopefully I'll be able to explain some of the notes to you. So I'm hoping that you have me on one side of your screen as I'm talking and you have your own personal OneNote open so that you can check off some of the answers as we go. So first of all, I'm going to first of all check homework. So um, I gave you homework on Tuesday, which was to complete the first two pages of the latent heat um, notes, which is 7.1. Um, first two pages, you just had to do the questions on the first page, which is filling in the diagram, as well as a question on page two after having had a bit of a read. So first of all, um, I introduced the idea that there were states of matter and we talked about that right at the beginning of the term and we were very quick to identify, I guess, four different states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and also plasma. For the purposes of this unit, we are not going to consider what actually happens as you move towards plasma and also away from plasma because that actually is a chemical change. Um, so we're not, we're not going to focus on that. We're just going to focus on the um, changes that are actually physical changes. So the chemical composition of the material actually does not alter. So you'll see that there's a pink box um, around the sections that you're most interested in. And I'm hoping that you've named some of the processes. So I started for you and wrote down melting. So these are the names of the processes that I had. Um, and I just left them as verbs. So there's vaporizing, which takes you from uh, liquid to gas um, and from gas to liquid condensing, liquid to solid, solidifying or freezing. And then there's sublimation, which is solid to gas, which we also talked about last time when we talked about states of matter. A lot of you mentioned that, yes, um, dry ice is a classic example or, or solid carbon dioxide is a classic example of a material that at room uh, conditions in our lab will go through sublimation. So the opposite of that is actually deposition. Um, we are going to focus not on the ones that go straight from solid to gas or gas to solid, but rather the intermediate changes. So melting, vaporizing, condensing and solidifying or freezing. Um, I also asked you to read page two, which is a little bit of a discussion on what actually happens when um, things change state. Um, really important that um, it's all about the internal energy. So what's happening as you input energy into a material and as it goes from one state to another. So this gigantic paragraph, which I'm not going to read for you because you've obviously read that for homework, is about what happens when we actually put heat into a solid to try to get it to turn into a liquid. And your task was really to have a go at explaining what happens when we boil something. So when we go from liquid to gas. The idea is that um, latent heat is actually the amount of heat that's required to actually to force a substance to change state. Um, either it's required to be put in as we go from solid to liquid to gas, or it's heat that's required to come out of the material if we want to bring the substance back from gas, liquid, and then back into a solid. So the idea of it being latent or in fact, hidden means that um, this is the amount of heat that actually is pumped into the material, but you don't actually see the normal increase in temperature that you would expect. So, in fact, water is a classic example. When you boil water, it boils at 100 degrees um, and it will stay at 100 degrees. No matter how much heat you put into it, the temperature of the water never will exceed over 100 unless you do something special with it, which we will talk about later. Um, so, you have to explain what happens. So, I'm hoping that you've got your answer in front of you and I've got my answer. So just to compare, here's my answer. So my answer is that the input energy is given to the particles to move faster. And the whole idea is that input energy does go towards another type of energy. So this is conservation of energy now that we are conserving energy. We're putting energy in. It's turning into kinetic energy and it should increase the temperature because things are moving faster. So in terms of average kinetic energy, it should all increase. However, when you are boiling something or when something turns from liquid to a gas, the fastest moving particles are actually constantly leaving the liquid. And so if you are removing the fastest moving molecules all the time, then it actually brings the average back down. And so that's why it stays 
um, at 100 degrees because the average kinetic energy of the liquid actually hasn't changed. So a really good analogy, which I think a lot of you might understand, would be when students play up um, in a particular sporting code. So I'm going to pick cricket because um, generally if you're a cricketing person um, and you're batting, um, the more balls you hit, the better it is, I guess. So I'm going to pick a number and say, let's say the batting average of um, the 11 A's cricket team is currently at 100. Um, and that's the average for everyone who, who is on the team. If we remove the best players out of that team, and play them up in the opens, what will happen is that the average of that particular team's batting rate will fall, as expected. Um, but if you input a bit of energy to, you know, train them, make them go to the gym, ADP, then they are going to improve again. But sometimes, and it happens when people are injured, um, they continue to remove the top players out of the 11 A's and if you keep doing that I hope you can appreciate that the average batting rate of the team is going to kind of like increase maybe decrease increase decrease so overall if, you, if that happens fast enough then it averages out and it actually the whole team doesn't actually improve so I hope that gives you a good idea as to how to visualize what's going on and how it's possible that when we're going through a phase change temperature does not change.